Appearances can mislead you, words can deceive you, but countenance will never fool you. Stay tuned. Galatians 5. Now the works of the flesh are clearly revealed, which are adultery, impurity, uncleanness, lustfulness, idolatry, witchcraft, enmity, fighting, jealousies, anger, rivalries, stubbornness, divisions, heresies, envying, murders, drunkenness, reveling, and things like these, of which I tell you beforehand, as I also said before, that the ones practicing such things will not inherit the kingdom of Yah. The ones practicing such things will not inherit the kingdom of Yah. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faith, meekness, and self-control. Against such things, there is no instruction. But the ones belonging to Messiah Yeshua crucify the flesh with its passions and lusts. Let us therefore live by the Spirit and surrender to the Spirit. Shalom, brothers and sisters. Hope you all are enjoying your day. Um, just wanted to just come and share a quick update about, um, it's just a follow-up um, of my three-day fast, um, as well as um, talk a little bit about a, a little bit today about, if I can get this out, about countenance and um, allowing thy countenance or the countenance of a person to lead you. Um, just quickly, my three-day fast was absolutely, if you did not um, listen to the testimony, um, it's, a, it's actually entitled, um, A Fly in the Ointment. And I um, also talk about myself fasting for three days, the experience, um, why I fasted. And um, just kind of just, I talked about, you know, some of the things that occurred during that time. And then also, um, we had Sister Stephanie who came on and also shared her wonderful testimony. So if you did not go back and check that out, please go back and check it out. Because the Father Yah had um, a message for me to deliver to his people. Um, and so, and I did that. And so, today's message is entitled, Allow Thy Countenance or the count Their Countenance to Lead You. So, the countenance is the very essence um, of a person. It's the very essence of a person. Um, a lot of times, people are led astray because they miss the countenance of a person. Um, it's very important, um, especially now in these end times, that we turn off the ears of a person, um, that we um, we look past the outward appearance. Um, many of us, especially um, in amongst those who have been awakened to the truth, uh, many of us have been deceived, especially many of our women in this truth, because we um, judge um, whether a person is walking in holiness or righteousness as according to the outward appearance. We look at um, many of these uh, men, uh, Israelite men, and we see, you know, um, they look well put together um, outwardly. When you look at them outwardly, they may appear to be holy. Um, we look at their attire, um, and this goes for women and two. We look at the fact that, we okay, they have their head wraps. You know, they have a dress that goes down to the floor. You can only see the sliver of their eyes. And um, we look at many of these men, we say, okay, they're teaching Hebrew. They can speak fluent Hebrew. Um, they, they seem like they teach very well. 
Okay, they can put scripture together. Um, they can quote scripture. And so when we look at a lot of these things, especially if they have a lot of favor um, with men, okay, we, we look at this and if they have a large following, we just naturally equate them, okay, well, then they must be walking in truth because look how many people are following them. Look how much esteem they're getting from men. You know, look at their outward appearance. Um, they look good outwardly. They can speak Hebrew. They, you know, they seem to appear to be teaching well. And so we, 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 we ignore the countenance of a person and we just go based off of what we hear and what we're, um, what we see alone. And the father of Yah gave us five operations. There are five operations of Yah. Um, and I spoke about that in the understanding of Yah. If you go to that lesson, I'm not getting ready to give a, a full breakdown of that. Go to the lesson that I ta recently taught on the understanding of Yah. Go check it out on that channel. But there are five operations, okay, of, of, of levels of understanding. And Yah gave us the eyes, okay. He gave us um, the, the, he gave us the eyes. He gave us nose. He gave us um, the ears. Okay, he gave us um, the um, the understanding of uh, cogitations. He he's given us operations, things to help us, which many of us refer to as the five senses. Okay, he also gave us the cogitation of speech. There's operations that he's given to us to help us to be able to understand, and it's not just one thing. We need to be operating and using all five of those in order to understand and to be able to determine a countenance. He's given us, if you have his Holy Spirit, you have those operations within you, okay? And we have to get to the point where we have knowledge of understanding, not just um, knowledge or looking at someone because they appear to be knowledgeable, but we have knowledge of understanding and you are able to read a person's countenance. A countenance is the very essence of who a person is beyond what you're hearing with your ears, beyond what you're seeing with your eyes, where they look good or they look like they can teach well and they appear to be esteemed by men. When you are able to turn off what a person is saying, what, what you're seeing, and actually look at and discern their countenance, that's going to tell you everything that you need to know. And so having said that, um, you're able to understand the deep things of the enemy as well when you can see the countenance of a person. So what? let me say this, because I don't want to confuse anybody. Many of us... Uh, many of the women are getting deceived in Israel because they're looking at these men. They're esteeming the men. They're thinking that they teach well, and there are many things to be esteemed about them. Outwardly, there's, they say all the right things, okay? They sound like they're esteemed, but they never really um, read their, the countenance of the person. They never really saw the true essence or discern the true essence of the person. What is the person? Not just what you heard. And everything that sound good, or they look on the outward appearance as if they're righteous or walking holy. But have you really paid attention to the essence of who they are? What's really going on behind closed doors? What is it that you're seeing? When we just got finished reading Galatians 5, are you seeing the, the works of the flesh that's operating in this person? Or are you seeing the fruits of the spirit? The fruits of the Spirit is the key to acting wisely. I'm going to say this again. The fruits of the Spirit is the key to acting wisely. Many of the um, the men, and um, I see a lot of uh, uh, the women teachers are in this faith. They're going back and forth with these men who clearly um, hate the daughters of Zion. And it's really not even about them. It's, there's a work. Uh, there's there's a work that's going on in them, and it's not the fruit of the spirit. It's the work of the flesh, because there's a lot of divisions. There's a lot of heresies um, that are being taught. Um, there's um, a lot of anger, a lot of murder, with, and you can murder with your mouth. 
okay, without having ever done anything physically to the person. There's a lot of stubbornness and stubbornness that's going on, a lot of jealousies. There's a lot that's going on. You have to know um, when there is no peace, when there is no joy, and we all have times where we may get angry, you know, or we're and get angry quickly or, you know, just may have an off day. But when we're reading Galatians 5 as, as it pertains, um, it says that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom. If you practice anger where you're always angry, you're always upset, you're always, um, you know, uh, jealous and envious of other per, per, of other people, um, you're always walking in hatred. You have no joy. You have no peace. And uh, you're walking around, can't control your flesh, can't stop sinning, can't stop fornicating. And you are exhibiting and in your life on a continuous basis. This is not something you're struggling with. This is just how you are. You practice these things. There are many who are in Israel. They have put Yah's name at the end of their name. They've changed their last name to Israel. Put Yah at the end of their name. Yet they're still fornicating. Yet they're still um, arguing um, and about genealogies and heresies and walking in stubbornness and doing. Uh, uh, the, there's no kindness in them. There's no peace in them. There's no joy. They spend their every waking moment um, trying to cause contention, strife. When you see these things going on, why is it that many of you uh, get allow the enemy to suck you in? to the works of the flesh of another person began to look at the countenance saw 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 the glory of yah on david okay saw knew that yah was with him many of you that these people who are coming after you whether they're people um uh with supposedly of israel people on your job, people, family members, friends, whoever it is that you're allowing, whoever your saw is in your life, why are you allowing them uh, to draw you in and pull you um, into what is going on, the turmoil or the, and I call it the, the whirlwind that's going on in, in their life. Many of these people, See the glory of Yah on you. Many of these people, when you're wondering, why am I getting attacked? Why is this person doesn't like me? Many of these people know that Yah is with you. And I'm talking about those of you who are walking upright. Okay? Not practicing lawlessness and sin. Many of these people see the peace that's in your life. They see the fruits of the Spirit. They see the anointing that's on you. They see that you walk in joy no matter what the situation where they're rich or poor, hungry or fed, you know, no matter what's going on, they see that you still have joy. They see that your faith is not shaken, that you still remain steadfast. And there are many people, you could have less than some people look worse than what people would consider worse because beauty is in the eye of the beholder. But you can have less um, and, and be uh, not as esteemed as other people but because the glory of Yah is on you and they see it, you'll have people envious and jealousy, jealous of you for no reason. They'll hate you without a cause. You've never said anything to them. You've never transgressed them. You've never transgressed um, any one of their loved ones. They just don't like you. Why is that? Why do you, Don't you think they see the anointing that's on you? Don't you think they see that you have joy, that you have peace, that you walk in meekness, which means that you also walk in truth? Don't you see that they can see that Yah is with you? David, Saul knew that David, um, Saul knew that the glory of Yah was on David. He saw the glory of Yah on David. He saw how he had favor with Yah and me. And he saw that um, Yah was with him. And he was jealous of that. Okay? He went, and, and he, and this is Saul. He's supposed to be the king. I've had, have you ever had that happen? I've had that happen plenty of times on, especially in my workplace, even in amongst Israel. And I, I shared this many times. It has been very difficult for me, um, even though I've wanted it, but having a relationship with many of the women in Israel, there's a lot of jealousy and envy that goes on amongst the women 
of Israel. And I'm telling you, I've tried to have a relationship and it just doesn't work. Um, but many times people see the glory of Yah on you. They see that Yah is with you. They see the anointing on you. Many of your enemies believe and see the anointing on you before you often see it. And you're wondering, why do they hate me? Why are they envious or jealous of me when I have less? I'm not as as esteemed. I, you may not even be as, as knowledgeable or whatever the case may be, but they hate you. It's because his glory is on you. His light is shining on you. So continue to be a light. Pay attention to the countenance, many of you, especially in Israel. Pay attention to the countenance of a person, the very essence of a person. Shut off what they're saying so that you can actually discern who they really are and not get caught up and deceived in the outward appearance and how well they may be of speech or how many scriptures they can quote. But are they operating with the fruits of the spirit or the works of the flesh. If you follow this very simple, and this is, it, this is really simple. If you follow Galatians five, Galatians five will tell you everything you need to know. Galatians five, I think it's 19 through 22 or 23. That will tell you everything you need to know about who a person is based off of what, uh, where are they operating from the fruits of the spirit or the works of the flesh. Pay attention to the countenance. It will never, and I can't remember, I think it's Ecclesiastes 37, but he says, Yah says, it will never lead you wrong. It will always, I can discern a person's countenance. I don't pay attention to outward appearances, how well someone can teach. There's many who I know amongst Israel right now, they're teaching, they're highly esteemed, got a lot of followers, and I see all the holes. I see the breaches. I, I can see the countenance, and I stay clear away. Someone who's always angry, someone's always, um, there's someone who's still getting drunk, someone who still can't control their lower loins, fornicating, all of these things. Simple things like many people in Israel saying they're awakened, but don't even know how to even just simply keep the Sabbath the right way, not buying and selling, not doing work. And we'll make all kinds of excuses why we're working on the Sabbath or having other people work for you. You're not supposed to have other people work for you on the Sabbath as well. It's the same thing. It's very simple. And so pay attention to the countenance of a person and stop just focusing merely on what you're hearing or what you're seeing because people can deceive people can deceive for a long time with the what they're doing outwardly and and what they telling you but it's only for so long they can keep the charade up before you're able to discern the countenance of a person and so having said that my three day fast was absolutely <sighs> since then I'm telling you there's a song and I cannot sing. I know someone actually took the time on a previous video when I just wanted to share something that was in my heart. I already said, I know I can't sing. Someone actually took the time to, you know, not like it when I'm singing to my Abba Yah. So, you know what? Uh, bless you. I, I had to pray for that person because I thought that was really mean spirited for someone to actually do that. But there is a song that has just been on my heart and I've been singing it. I've been waking up to it. And it's it talk. I think it goes with you're so beautiful. Um, uh, everything changes. Um, I'm captivated. I'll never be the same with just one look. Everything changes. I'm captivated. I'll never be the same with just one look. When I tell you. Yah allowed me to see. He allowed me to see him. I was in his presence. I, he allowed me to see. And when I say see, I am able to, I was able to experience him. I was able to experience him on a level that I never experienced him. He, he truly allowed me to see and experience him. And I was able to experience uh, his mercy, his mercy. I was able to experience um, him being gracious unto me. I was ex able to experience um, 
his sustaining power and how he sustained me for those three days because I, I and on the uh, testimony I share how I cried when he told me I had to fast for three days. I broke down because I thought it was just going to be one day. And when I heard three days, I, I cried because I'm like three days. I did not think, and I kept saying, I, 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 but y'all said, you're counting on yourself. He says, you know, do you not trust that I can sustain you? He said, your, your, um, strength is in me, not in bread. And I had to suck it up and I had to be obedient and I'm grateful for it because you know, I, y'all allowed me to see him. He uh, allowed me to s truly see him and by experience of in his presence and to experience his, his glorious power, his sustaining power. He sustained me that entire three days, took away my craving for food. I smelled it, but I didn't smell it. He allowed me to be able to go through those three days like a champ and I couldn't have done it without him. I could have never imagined I had that in me. And this is the reason why it's so important that we really truly understand only those who endure to the end shall be saved. That last night was rough, but I know it was an attack from the enemy because I wasn't hungry. It was an attack on my flesh for, for me to go and eat and to break it. And I had to cry out to Yah. I had to quote every scripture that came, that the rock brought to my mind so that I could stay steadfast and not give up. And, and I cried out to God for him to calm my flesh and he did it. He did it. And I was able to do it with the grace of Yah, with his mercy, his sustaining power. And I, now I see God totally different. That song is, um, everything changes. I always say everything has changed. I am captivated. I am captivated by you, oh Yah. Um, and you know, with just one look, you know, I everything has changed. You know, I'll never be the same with just one look. When you it truly experience the presence of Yah, like I did, you will be so captivated, captivated by Him. You nothing will ever be the same again if you just get one look. All it took was one look. He allowed me to see him. One look. And i am never be the same. I Yesterday I spent time almost, well, I was crying, singing to him. Because I will never be the same person that I was before that fast. I will never be the same. He allowed me to see him. He allowed me to experience his that his word is true. I already knew that. But to know it and to read scripture about it and then actually allow him to take you through it, it's a completely different thing. So I give all praises be to Yah. I, I look at him differently. I look at the word differently. It just gave me more strength um, to endure to the end because only those that endure to the end will be saved. Um, I pray that the testimony, if you didn't go see it, go check it out. But one thing I want to end this with is our father Yah is um, a message that he did give to me is he's not pleased. He said that Israel stinks. He says they stink. He said, and I am not pleased. He is not pleased. And I pray right now for those of you who are listening, if you are operating in the works of the flesh, if you are practicing the works of the flesh, lying, um, committing adultery, fornicating, still in the world, still getting drunk, practicing um, anger, uh, practicing envy, jealousy, strife, contention, all of those things, hating your brother, sister out of the cause. I pray that you will repent now because there, the reason for the lesson of flying the ointment was the flies. They were out. Uh, there were hundreds of them trying to escape, trying, they were at the window and it was clear that they wanted to escape. And I, when I was during my fast, I prayed and I asked, I said, what's the meaning of these flies? And he said, the flies represent the disobedient ones in the land. And he said, and them at the window, is them trying to escape. He says, they will not escape. He says, they will not escape my wrath. So he's not playing around. I still been seeing 666 and 66 almost every day, sometimes two or three times a day. Something is going to happen. And our people, we, we got to be ready to stand. We got to make sure that we start operating the fruits of the spirit. The fruits of the spirit is the key to acting wisely. Those who do not um, bear fruit, 
and, and bear the fruits of the spirit, you will not see the kingdom of Yah. So that's my message today. If you, and I'm especially my daughters, my daughters of Yah, stop listening to these men and just what they're saying and what they're showing you outwardly. Pray for Yah to give you a heightened level of discernment of spirit. Discern their countenance. Pay attention to the countenance. Are they operating in the works of the flesh or the fruits of the spirit? Yah will show you it. When you see the countenance, run. If it is not of Yah, run. Do not con you do not have to continue to, to stay attached to people just because they're Shalom and Canaan, got their hair wrapped or, you know, wearing things and you think, oh, well, they're holy just because they say they know they're Israel. There are many people in Israel. If you're new in this walk and you need a teacher, pray and ask Yah to give you a teacher. But the first thing you need to do is get into the word to see what his word says for yourself. In these end days, it's time out for depending on a man to show you the truth. It is, yes, we faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of Yah, and we need preachers. He has teachers. Yes, he does. However, your first job is to get to know Yah for yourself, to study, to show yourself approved that you need to not be in shame, rightly being able to defy the truth. It is your responsibility to know Yah for yourself. When you know him for yourself, when you experience him for yourself, when you know what his word says, no one can come along and show you something else because you're going to discern their countenance right away. That's why I'm able to, there's teachers that I listen to and that I enjoy, but because I'm strong in this truth and because I seek Yah for my faith, my, for myself, and I've learned through his Ruach HaKadosh to have understanding, knowledge of understanding of what his word is, I can listen to someone else and they can be well dressed on the outside. They can speak fluent Hebrew. They can look the part. They can look like they're walking righteous, but I can't discern their countenance. I watch how they're moving. I'm able to discern by what they're teaching. If they're teaching heresies or they're teaching something that is contrary to his word, but that will only come by me first knowing what his word says. So get in that word for yourself. Forget about what a person is saying and what they're hourly showing you and pay attention to the countenance. Are they operating in the works of the flesh or the fruits of the spirit? Shalom, family.